a very big hello guys, I am Paul from Paul Rolls Dice and today I finally got a big box, albeit a crushed box from Kickstarter, I've obviously opened this up, but this is my Avatar Legends Kickstarter pledge, I've been waiting for this for such a long time, so let's get the box out of the way, we have tons to look at, let's dive in. Now, first and foremost, we'll, uh, we'll grab this, because instead of having a terrible carpet to look at, We've got a beautiful map of the Avatar world. So, oh, this is really nice, really nice. I'm going to try not to rush any of this, but I thought we could maybe lay that down as the uh, as a little backdrop, because that's better than the carpet, right? That is really nice quality. This will be getting hung up somewhere when we when we play our Avatar games, when we actually get around to, to playing an Avatar game. So anyway, there's a world map, really nice quality, really thick as well. Nice little tag there for the uh, the official Avatar Legends logo and whatnot. Uh, next, what have we got? Again, another item from the... Uh, it's one, one of the higher tiers of the, uh, of the Kickstarter. I did back the Polar Bear Dog tier, it was called, which is essentially uh, the core rulebook and all of the physical... Uh, stretch goals as well, including this. This is just a pie show tile, really, really nice. It's uh, it's embossed as well. Let me uh, let me see if I can get it up close. Yeah, nice and embossed, really cool. Doesn't really do anything except uh, collectible. But what I was thinking of doing is when we're out and about in the world, I could maybe just have the pie show tile on the world map just to kind of signify, in a general sense, where we are. So yeah, we've got Fire Nation, uh, Water Tribes. Air Nomads dotted about as well, and then we've got the giant Earth Kingdom, and we will definitely be in the walled city of Ba Sing Se at some point. So the Pai Show tile can stay there. So next, for this pledge, uh, we will pull out the official Avatar Legends, the role-playing game, Dice Pack. Now this game runs on a system called Powered by the Apocalypse. This is my first experience with Powered by the Apocalypse. I've normally played, you know, standard Dungeons and Dragons, D20 games, um, the the Star Wars role-playing game by Wizards of the Coast. They also use D20, uh, Mutants and Masterminds, D20. But my my current uh, role-playing games are Fantasy Flight's Genesis, which is a narrative game. But we're talking about this today. 2D6 system. Now these dice are looking to be absolutely stunning so because it's a 2d6 system there is one set for each of the available roles in the game so you've got airbenders earthbenders i'm getting i'm getting it wrong straight away waterbenders earthbenders airbenders firebenders weapon specialists and technologists so that's really cool. So if you wanted, you could you could run a six-player campaign here with the Game Master as well. The sweet spot is normally three to five players in most role-playing games, or for what I've actually been a Game Master slash Dungeon Master of, but they are really nice. And another thing I like about these dice is that the symbol is the number six and not the number one. Because a lot of, a lot of dice from other games, uh, Warhammer games, when you buy specialty dice, the symbol tends to be the number one. Which number one normally signifies failure, and you want you want to roll the symbol and it feel epic. So that is really really cool. Now I'll keep those in the cellophane for now. Let's uh, let's put those to one side, and to go with the dice pack is let me grab it. If I put those there, we have an official dice bag. This is really really nice. It's a felt dice bag. It's got a drawstring, metal clasp, and then the symbols of the four elements. Um, you could upgrade this into a leather with an embossed or an imprinted um, elemental patch, but the price they were asking for that, I just, I don't, I don't feel like for me personally it wasn't worth it. If you've got it, awesome. But I just, I think the felt one will uh, will do nice, and that'll keep all of the dice nice and tidy in there, as as well as my uh, my pie show tile. So next, we have this lovely deck of Avatar Legends combat action cards. Now this comes with everything you'll need to run encounters. The, the box itself is a little bit of a pain to get into, but I'll bust it open. It did come in cellophane, but I pre-opened that up because cellophane is annoying to get off on uh, on camera. But these, these cards, as well as the artwork on the back, is they're used as an aid for combat because the, this combat system in Powered by the Apocalypse 
can be quite alien to, to role players if you've never used the system before. All of them are backed with just, just random characters, which is really cool. The artwork's nice. We've got Tens in there. Um, we've got Princess Azula. And there are, we've got Aman from Korra. We've got Jet from Season 1 of Avatar, I think it is. So these cards, I'll show you these first. These are for all of the players to use. You get three of them, and it just shows you the, the basic actions that you can take as a character. So Evade and Observe, Advance and Attack, Defend and Manoeuvre. And like I say, there's enough of those for nine people, which is cool. So you'll never really use those uh, fully unless the, the Game Master is running a lot of NPCs in an encounter put those to the side so these are the statuses of the game and these they yeah they are double-sided so prepared is a buff essentially and then stunned would be a debuff and they do you know different things in the game as well so we've got enough prepared cards for everyone pretty much we've got inspired with Toph Bay Fong on the front there and then we've got the debuff of trapped <laughs> with a soccer with a I'm trying to remember the name of that it's a moose something Moose bear? I don't know. The the animals in the Avatar universe they are uh, the normally two two um, animals combined like polar bear dog, uh, bat lemur. You know, except flying bison. That's just a bison that can fly. But anyway, uh, so we've got inspired. Uh, next we have empowered with Uncle Iroh, and then we have impaired with um, I can't remember his name. It's Bolin's brother. Yeah, I need to watch Korra again. It's been a while. But anyway, so that's empowered and impaired. Then we have favored. And then we have Doomed. So there's another buff and a debuff. Those are really good cards. These will definitely get some use in my games as well because instead of having to throw to the, the core rulebook every time, we can just use this deck of cards. They are really, really nice. And it gives you some information on the back, uh, all of the stuff that we get. So that's really cool. I have to say, all of the artwork on these is really, really nice as well. Right, next we have a pack of notepads. Now... I'm a little bit, I love these, don't get me wrong, I love these, but I'm a little bit dubious about actually using them because once they're filled, they're gone for good and they are just really nice. So there's one with Ang and Korra on the front for the Game Master and then Avatar Legends, the role-playing game on the back. And they're essentially just empty pads to jot down character information, probably good use for one or two campaigns. Um, they, they do have a lot of pages, which is really cool. And then we get a set of four for all of the elements. Now, unfortunately, we don't get one for the technologist or the weaponist, weapon specialist, which is a shame, but you can't complain. They are really, really nice. Really, really nice. So that's those. Right, we are getting onto the books now. So first, we will look at this absolute beauty. This is the Wan Shi Tong's Adventure Guide. So Wan Shi Tong is the giant owl demigod creature thing that runs the Wan Shi Tong library in the desert in the Avatar universe and this originally was a collection of I think four paperbacked uh, adventure booklets but because the stretch goals were met remember or if you don't know this game on Kickstarter launched with a goal of $50,000 for completion and are you ready for this? It made nine and a half million dollars. It became one of the highest funded Kickstarters in history. The, the Avatar fan base have wanted a role playing game, an official role playing game for a long time. So this is the adventure guide. This gives a lot of information, new, uh, new player options as well, new character classes, or as they're called in this playbooks, which are just there. I won't go into everything, but I just want to show you some of the some of the, the the detail and the artwork in these books and there's missions for all of the eras in the game i think there are five eras you can run through so you've got the Korra era is the latest you've got the ang era which is set just after the events of the last airbender you've got the hundred year war which is when ang is frozen in ice and the avatar is gone then you've got the roku era and then you've got another one in between that as well i can't remember the name of it forgive me uh, but yeah i mean just absolutely stunning full color books Stats for legendary NPCs, so you can bring people like Tenzin, uh, Kovira, Asami, all into your games as well. Soccer, just these are most of this was stretch goals. So every time they hit like another half million, they they just right. Okay, we've uh, we've now created a stat block for um, for so and so. And at the back of this, we've got pre-generated characters, which is really really cool. And an extra list of special attacks. So in this game, obviously bending is going to be a main focus for a lot of players. It's going to be hard 
to convince a player or to see if a player would want to play a weapon specialist or, or a technologist because the bending powers are so, so damn good. But we'll see. And it's hardback as well. And it also comes with a, a nice little tab so you can keep track of uh, keep track of pages and things. So that's that. And now the final piece and a slightly customised final piece because as a backer of certain tiers, you get to choose the front and back cover of your special edition of the core rulebook. And there's mine. I had a choice to put Avatar, Ang, or Korra on the front, and the other one would go on the back, and because I first experienced the Avatar universe with Ang, he had to go on the front, and it looks superb. He's in his Avatar state, he's an absolute badass. And then same again, we've got Korra on the back. Vatu? I think that's Vatu, one of the spirits from the spirit realm. Again, oh, let me get rid of that. Um, I've not watched Korra in a long time, but I do need to get onto it again. Tabs and pretty cool two tabs so you can keep track of a few things and again i won't go into full detail of the book uh, more than happy to take a deep dive into these items later on but i just wanted to show you just how big this book is it's nearly 300 pages there is the standard DD stuff how to play what is a role-playing game how to play your character combat running a campaign or it's called a season really in this because it's you know you run it like a tv show and then just oh, just look at the artwork i am such a huge avatar last airbender fan and seeing artwork like this, HD artwork from a kind of an old show now is just, it's its just beautiful. All you need to play as well, standard role playing game, pencils and paper, couple of players, rule book, 2d6, which we have, and it's just, it's beautiful. There's a lot of lore in this as well, so you're going to be able to make adventures in any, any era. And again, more uh, more NPCs at the back there. Lots of attacks, how to level up. Um, a starting mission, which I will be using because, like I say, I've never used this system before. It's very different to anything I've ever used. So I will be doing that to uh, to hook my characters. There's Pabu in a little suit. That's adorable from the Fire Ferrets. Um, yeah, just absolutely stunning. I am over the moon with this. It, it has exceeded all of my expectations. Those are the core play. So these are the classes, Adamant, Bold, Guardian, etc, etc. You'll have your DPS, you'll have your tanks, you'll have your healers, you'll have your conversationalist, you'll have everything in between. Anything you can think of to run a game in the Avatar universe, which is just, it's beautiful. The I'll, I'll, I'll leave the video on that piece of artwork with Katara, because that is absolutely superb. My polar bear dog pledge cost me about £140, uh, UK money of course. More than happy with, with what I got. Core rule book on its own will can fetch up to £40 or £50. A book like this, where speaking from an experienced player of Dungeons and Dragons and Star Wars and I'm looking at my other um, supplement book right now, they can cost £30, so that can be up to £80 there. Even those, a set of those, four or five pounds each. Well worth it. Dice pack, combat deck, which is going to be beautiful to use in the game. Yeah, well worth it. Well worth it. Um, and I am I'm looking forward to diving into this and, and doing some more doing some more videos as well. So, my friends, thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. I release videos quite quite haphazard at the minute because I'm busy with work and I do live streaming on Twitch. That's my main thing. Playing video games on there and trying to get good and stuff. Um, but I am going to be uploading a ton more videos in the new year. I'm really excited for 2023. So many opportunities to get some role playing done uh, on the channel via live streams and things. I've got a few playlists you can take a look at as well. Um, and hit me up in the comments. Let's uh, let's talk about Avatar because it is one of my favourite universes ever, ever, ever. And now I'm rambling. I will let you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.